Good morning guys and girls. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a nice, a very cool species. Probably something that the older people amongst us are going to know a lot more than the younger guys, which is normally the case. But we're talking about the, the milkfish. Now the milkfish called Chanos Chanos. Um, now Chanos means open mouth, so open mouth, open mouth. Not really sure exactly where they got by that, but probably in the way that they feed. Now, the milkfish is a phenomenally beautiful fish. They are absolutely gorgeous. They are a, a torpedo shaped, so really round tube, comes to a nice uh, bullet shaped uh, mouth, all the way back to the tail. Now, they've got a massive, massive tail for their size of their body, and it's quite a forked, set forked tail like that. Similar to a cooter in that kind of style, but without the scoots on the side. Now, the very cool thing about the actually two very cool things, three very cool things, four very cool, many many cool things about them. They've got a very small mouth. Now, that will relate to how they feed. We'll get to that in a second, um, and that's probably where they get their name from. They have very big, very big eyes for their size. They are. But much like a tarpon, they're very similar, almost look like they've been carved out of glass or carved out of, uh, out of ice. They've got that brilliant sheen to them. Anyway, they've got also a, a fused gill. Now, a lot of fish you'll see they've got a gill plate on either side that opens up. Do you guys open up that way? What, what's uh, very unique about the milkfish is that the gill plates actually fuse at the bottom. So, with every pump, it's almost like a, a, a mono pump. The whole gill pumps like that. So it sits fused all the way around. A single pump gets a lot more oxygen, a lot more water flow into the gills. Very, very interesting thing there, which means they can actually operate, get a lot more oxygen more efficiently. Uh, second to that, if you've ever seen a tuna along its body, it's got a little mark where its pectoral fin fits in. Now, as they put their, fin, their pec fins flat, it actually fits into that little groove like that, which makes them extremely dynamic. Now, that's kind of the best way to describe it. A milkfish would be a combination of a tuna and a mullet. Put those two together, you get the hard fighting abilities of a mullet, the extreme endurance of a tuna, and the speed of a tuna itself with a bit more look of the mullet, if that makes sense. So, now that you've got that picture in your head, they are one of the species that enter estuaries as well as in the sea. They spawn at sea and that's during summer so your your main peak abundance is going to be during the summer period. Now when I say the older guys are going to remember them more, Durban used to have a flourishing abundance of, of milkfish. They used to be, when you came in uh, into the harbour again, there that Vecchi's limestone area you'd get fields of these fish feeding along the top. And then a lot like mullet, they've got a little bit of a whitish tinge to their lips and when they feed on the surface like that, their mouths are open the whole time. So that might be where their, mouth, where their name comes from, Chanos Chanos or open mouth. They're sitting with their open mouths along the surface like that and that's how you can see them from far away. Um, they are, their feeding habits, they're really going to be feeding on algae. That's standard, that's all they really, really want to eat. So. When it comes to targeting them, the guys have had success to a certain degree on targeting them on bait, but they really, it's more of an opportune capture than anything else. It's not, it would be something maybe your bait had washed into a bed of weed and just picked it up as a little morsel scrap. Um, but the guys used to normally jig them with a hook, so they'd throw it over, the hook, over them and jig them things, which is a practice we don't really recommend because it's going to damage the fish quite a lot. <clears throat> the the main guys that have managed to target them are the saltwater fly fishermen. Now the guys in Alphonse have done amazing with this. MC himself is they've developed flies that are the, it's called the Milky Dream. Really a fly worth looking up. The Milky Dream, the Milk Magic. They're all sort of flies like this that utilise very very soft synthetic material or sheep's wool. Sometimes that's been dyed to look like algae. Now, if you've ever seen algae on a on a sand flat, it's very mobile. It's very, um, I wouldn't say gooey, but it, it it it's got a lot of movement in it, and that's where they use these materials just to give it a lot of a lot of movement in the fly. And they're actually fly fishing visually to these fish. They're stalking them. They're seeing the pods like that, and they're putting a fly in front of them. Now, most people when they hear fly, they think trout. 
This is something a lot, a hell of a lot stronger. This, a Milky will strip you on quite a lot of tackle. Your normal estuary spinning stuff is not suited to them. In terms of fly, you're using a 10 weight minimum, um, which tells you quite a lot. 10 weight, you're normally targeting your Dorado, maybe even Kuta, things like that. Your big, powerful offshore species. So a 10 weight's not a little a whippy trout stick. It's, it's got backbone to it. So it shows you these fish are flippin' strong. They, they're designed to keep going. They've got a lot more red muscle in them, like a tuna, so they just keep, uh, endurance just keeps pumping. They get that air to their, or at least the oxygen into their gills, keeps them, keeps them going, stops the lactic acid from building up. Um, Maturity-wise, you are looking at a fish that matures at about four years of age, and that's going to be for the, they, they're going to mature at that, at that four-year mark. Females a little bit smaller than the males, they're going to be about 50 centimeters total length, or fork length at least, um, and the males at about 90 centimeters. And the fish itself probably grows to about a meter and a half, I'd say, there about somewhere. Somewhere to that, that, that extent, maybe even to about 1.8, um, which you can imagine will be a phenomenal fish to catch. They, like we mentioned, the, the, they got a lot of red, red muscle in them, so they do make good eating, but they've got a lot of, of small bones in them, very similar to a spring owl, all those little bones in there, so it's quite an off-putting fish. It's not something you're going to be wanting to, wanting to keep, and the fight is so much more it's, it's worth, the fight is worth the, the fish. It's not you don't need to eat the fish to, to get your worth out of it. So it's something you really want to put back and let someone else enjoy that fight. So yeah, we've, I think we've pretty much covered the milky in its in all its entirety. It's got almost a bit of a cult following. So what happens with the, this being a fly fishing dominated species? The the fly scene goes from species to species. What becomes its sort of main focus at that time? and the milky a few years back was that was it now the guys have slightly started to figure it out and they can actually go actively target these these fish so uh, obviously by that time then they move on to something else a little bit more tricky but the milky is something that we could have had a major fishery year but i think with the pollution in the harbor it kind of destroyed the population and really pushed them off now it's it's a rare fish to find some of the guys do spear them um, that's really the only way you're going to be catching them now with any sort of certainty is to, to, to actually spear one, but it's, it's a rare fish now, especially here in South Africa. But more in the tropical areas, you are going to find them with a lot more, um, a lot higher concentration. So if you do yourself a favor, look up a bit of, uh, look up the videos on fly fishing for milkfish. The guys at Alphonse are doing a lovely job with that. And yeah, put one on the list. If you ever get the chance to catch one, please release it. It is a very valuable fish. And yeah, just enjoy the enjoy the beauty of the milkfish and look at all the, the features and everything. It makes it such a such a stunning and such a, a special fish. So yeah, the milkfish. Chanos chanos. Cheers.